a search for Bluetooth amps on Amazon, you will find a plenty, like dozens and dozens and pages and pages. But I came across this amp and I was like, man, this looks pretty cool. It's only 25 bucks. It's kind of roundish, kind of wood grain finish, has some little meters. So I said, let's get one in. So guess what I did? Bought one. Here it is, as you can see, not much to it. It's the amplifier itself. The manual looks to be mostly in Chinese. We will check the Google Lens and see what that says. It says Mini Digital Amplifier Manual. Now inside this Mini Digital Amplifier Manual, uh, you can see here it's got plenty of features. We're gonna actually show the amplifier off and show those different features and show you what the amp looks like. But it does show a power supply there at the bottom. It also shows one on the back and it does not include it, at least in the one that I purchased, but we'll talk about that again in a minute. Here's the amp itself. You can see input power LEDs there at the top. Then you can see the volume and power uh, button slash knob. And then the visual indicator LEDs, which we'll show that once we power it up so you can see how it works. And yeah, not a whole lot to it. Push button there to turn it off and on. On this side, we have the USB-C connection. That's for connecting to a computer or a cell phone. And on the opposite side, we have a 3.5 millimeter. That's for input. They call it the aux input. And we'll show that off later. And on the back of the amp, we flip it around, you can see these real beefy binding posts, which look kind of funny on an amp this small that you can put huge. You can put like eight gauge wire in there if you want to. And also the DC power input connection there is at the bottom. Center positive, nine volt to 24 volt operation. As far as the specs go, Bluetooth 5.0, uses the TDA3116 chip, which we like. We've shown that before in other tests. Has hi-fi sound, pure copper gold-plated terminals, superior design and color indicator, super compact but attractive appearance. Sounds good, right? Speaking of sounds good, the TPA3116 has been an amplifier that we've tested before and we really like the sound quality. We'll pry into the amp later. Take a closer look. You big dummy. As far as dimensions go, two and one eighth inch for the width or 54 millimeters, two and a half inches for the height or 63.5 millimeters, and two and five eighths inches or 67 millimeters for the depth. Now, if you're looking for this amp on Amazon, you have to be cautious because there's two different ones at the current time. The one that's around $25 with no power supply and the one that's 37 includes a 12 volt five amp power supply. Now, according to the specs, can take a nine volt up to 24 volt, 5.5 millimeter, 2.1 to 2.5 millimeter center positive. And I put some other examples here. Here's a 12 volt, five amp power supply for around 11 bucks. Here's a 19 volt, 4.74 amp for around 13. And the one that I picked up is a 24 volt, 10 amp, which was around 46 bucks was way expensive. So let's hook it up and try it out. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, the more engineering amplifier dyno to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the dyno tests. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. First up, we're gonna try the amp at eight ohms. Uh, they do not provide any ratings at eight ohms. So let's see what we get here. First test is certified. 24 volt power supply is being utilized. And here you can see, we get right around 30 watts, 28 and 29 watts per channel. The 14 volts you're seeing there is just for powering the amp dyno. So again, we're using a 24 volt power supply for the amplifier here. Uncertified test takes us up to the clipping point, uh, 29 watts per channel. So about half of what they say this amp will do, a little bit more than half. Dynamic, we get right at 30 watts and 29 watts. So pretty much the same across all three tests. Now let's try it at four ohm stereo. It's rated 50 watts by two max, and that's just the chip, the TPA3116 that's rated to do 50 by two. Certified test first, you'll notice it kind of jumps around a little bit here with the power. Notice that, so I don't consider that really clean. The four ohm load here is a resistive load. When you hook up speakers, they're reactive loads, so you're not gonna see a constant four ohm load 
like the dyno has, but this is just for testing amplifier output. Uncertified test, again, not, not a clean count, but we did get right at 50 watts per channel. And the uncertified test takes us up to clipping. Dynamically, you can see here, we get right around 50 watts again. Again, this sends a one kilohertz burst tone into the amp. So right about at the ratings. Now the results, we'll say impressive for the money because it's not very much. And here are the results we just talked about. If you stick around to the very end of the video, I do show a 2.67 ohm run and you can check that out. Now we'll do the do it bump dose segment. We call it a tiny amp with big sound. And you'll see what I mean compared to the speakers here. Look how small this amp is. It does literally fit in the palm of your hands. You turn it around and these huge binding post connectors I uh, didn't have any uh, banana plugs uh, to utilize for this, so I went ahead and just inserted the wires. This is around a 16 gauge wire, fits in with no problem, and this is probably the best way to hook it up. And the center at the bottom has the place for your DC power. Plug that in. Again, I use a 24 volt 10 amp. First up, we're going to try the Bluetooth. We'll power it on by pushing the center. It turns on the amplifier. You see the green light in the center. You see the blue light blinking for Bluetooth. And then we're going to get out our cell phone. And it shows up as Mini D Amp or Mini Damp. Not sure where they get that from. But yeah, just touch it on your phone, whatever you want to connect with Bluetooth. And it pretty much connected instantly. So that's good. So let's check it out now with some music. <laughs> the side here we have a connection for USB-C which can be used according to them the manufacturer with either a cell phone or a computer it says it doesn't need drivers or anything I just plugged it in to my Windows 10 computer plugged it into the device look on the computer and it pretty much shows up instantly and says it's ready to go have you ever felt are you listening damn On the right side of the amp is a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary connection. Let's try that now. Okay, it's Bluetooth right now into the amp and I'm gonna plug in the aux. Apparently whatever uh, you plug in last is the one that takes over so if you plug in USB last, it'll take over. Plug in aux last, it'll take over. But if you unplug it, you can see it defaults back to Bluetooth. I would just use it as Bluetooth unless you're hooking up to a computer. After the jamming the amplifier for at least an hour or so, decided to get out the FLIR and let's check out some thermal imaging. You can see here around 120 degrees Fahrenheit is about the highest I see on the outside of the amp. And we flip it around to the back now, the banana or the binding post really felt the warmest to me. It felt like they were actually part of the heat sink, but didn't see anything over 120, so not too bad. Next up, let's uh, pull this amplifier apart, which by the way, this was not super easy. You'll see when I get to that point. But first off, you can pull the knob off the front, just a potentiometer, that's easy to get off. And then uh, you can unscrew the um, the terminals here on the back, the binding post terminals. And then it, I think there was a little bit of glue that was holding us together. It's really hard to get it off, but you'll see here, get to a point and it just shoots off. Chow, there it goes. It didn't fall off the table, so no harm done. Here's the inside. You can see they've got some screws at the bottom, like some bolts or something that are uh, giving it extra weight, which it needs. And it's got uh, little pins that plug in from one side to the other. And we'll look at those little capacitors, 25 volt, 330 microfarad. They say Rubicon, but I'm not sure if these are real Rubicons. Here is the Bluetooth module 
the AC220BT. And we take out these four screws, we can get to the back so that we can see the TPA module. And there's a TPA module at the top. Now notice it does not have any kind of a heat sink on it. So that's something to notice. So you can't really pump this amp for a really long time because they should have some kind of a heat sink. You could probably retrofit a small one on here and help cooling factor. So the things I liked about the amp, it was relatively inexpensive, very small in size. The LED meters were pretty cool. Has USB, aux, and Bluetooth. Sound quality is good, that TPA3116, I like that. The Bluetooth range was also good. I used it throughout the top level of my house, didn't have any problems with connection. And the binding posts are nice for hooking up your speakers. You can use banana plugs if you want to. Could be better. The power supply is extra in the model that I got. The meters are not accurate. I'm going to show you that at the very end of the video. There's no input switching. It's whatever's plugged in last is what takes over. No subwoofer output. It is kind of too light because it will fall off the table because all the wires plugged into it. You have to be careful with that. And it's not a true 50 by two output. Kind of close, but not truly there. I really enjoy testing these kind of off the wall little mini amps like this. You can check my playlist in the video description. I have links to a lot of other amplifiers like this I've tested. If you have any recommendations, make sure you leave those comments below. Let me know what you want to see from Amazon. Any of these small amps, things like that are kind of cool. Thanks as always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. This is a quick example of how these uh, meters are not accurate because this is a sine wave and notice how the meters are bouncing up and down. Just wanted to show you that, that uh, if you want an accuracy, this is not your amp. Now we'll try the amp at 2.67 ohms, one kilohertz. We'll try all the tests. First up certified, not sure if it'll actually handle this load, but we'll try it. Kind of shuts off there at 10 and 15 watts. It's not doing any more than that. So it appears it does not like anything less than four ohms. Just out of curiosity, let's try uncertified. Maybe it just hits distortion, but yet it'll work up to clipping. We'll find out here. Nope, nope, does not like it. Okay, what about dynamic? Let's try dynamic. One kilohertz, 2.67. Ah. 66 and 65 watts. Interesting.